It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Evans. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Now, here's our Western story. <laughs> In a snug ranch house in the wealthy Paradise Valley cattle raising country, Albert Larrymore, old and respected rancher, is talking to a newcomer from the east, young Dan Sutton. I'm awfully sorry you're having such tough luck, Dan. I'll be glad to lend your money to replace the stock you've lost. Oh, thanks, Mr. Larrymore, but I couldn't do that. I mortgaged a lot more heavily than I ought to be, and I don't know how I'm going to make those payments. Now, now, son, don't give up. I'm on the verge of it, Mr. Larrymore. In fact, I came over here to see if you wanted to buy my place. <laughs> of course, I'd like to own the gold mine spread, Dan. Gold mine. What a name for it. But I want you to try to see things through. And again, if you need a loan to tide you over. <laughs> no interest, of course. Oh, thanks, no. I'll try to hang on a little longer, but if any more of my cattle die... It... Well, I'll, I'll try not to think about it, Mr. Larimore. And I want to say that you're a wonderful neighbor. Let me fill your cup again, Dan. No, thanks, Dale. I've got to be getting back. You better have the vet do an autopsy on those steers, Dan. Sure, if you can find out what's poisoning them, well, maybe you can find out where they're getting it. I don't think the vet could tell me any more than I already know. There's not a poisonous weed on the place. The water holes are all right. Dan, if the trouble's happening every time you don't patrol, why don't you stay in tonight and Pat and I'll patrol for you? Probably nothing had happened. You'd certainly do a better job of riding the place than I do. Oh, you shouldn't say that, Dan. Although, of course, if there's two better cowpokes in the valley than me and Roy, I have yet to see them. We'd go out after dark, Dan, so no one would know. And we'd make it very plain that you and Mrs. Sutton were staying in the house. That's a good idea, Roy. Say, why don't I ride out and call on the Suttons tonight, and the three of us will just sit and talk with the lights on and the shades up? Well, we could try it. We need help, Roy, and, and Helen and I would certainly like to have Dale spend the evening with us. Hey, that's a swell idea. Um, Dale, um, don't you think we ought to close up the place a little early so as we can get started? <laughs> we'll see, Pat. We'll try it, Dan. Cattle poisoners are something we can't have in Paradise Valley. Good, Roy. Well, we'll see you tonight, Dale. Uh-huh. Hey, who are these fellows coming in? I don't recognize them. So long. Hi there, Sutton. Oh, hello, Jack. Pete, how are you? Fine, Mr. Sutton. Just leaving, huh, Sutton? What's the matter? Ain't the food any good? <laughs> the food's fine. You can't miss on this place. Well, uh, so this is the Eureka Cafe. This <laughs> is it, and I'm Dale Evans. I run the place. And this is Pat Brady. He thinks he runs it. And the other gentleman is Roy Rogers. Well, howdy. I'm Jack Lester. My partner is Pete O'Connor. We're Larimore's new hands. Howdy. Mm, how hey, are you? Hey, what's that dog doing in here? Go on, beat it. Hey. Hey, don't kick at him. I'll put him outside if he bothers you. Come on, bullet boy. Well, what do you gentlemen think of Paradise Valley? Strictly small-time stuff. We come from, the stairs grow twice as big, the grass is four times as nourishing, and any less than 10,000 acres will turn into a miniature golf course. <laughs> Sounds like the mouths grow considerably larger there, too. Never mind, Pat. Let him talk, lady. Funny-looking geezer like that probably can't think of anything better to say. Uh, did you want to order something? Uh, 
steak. Uh, right, Jack? Right. Two best in the house. Yeah, I'll fix them, Dale. Huh. I like it better in the kitchen where it ain't so breezy. Huh. Well, I hope you fellows will get used to this small-scale operation in Paradise Valley. We think it's a fine place, and your boss is one of our leading citizens. Oh, we aren't complaining. Lamar gives us a good deal. Of course, it needs us mighty bad, too. And now that I know what Mineral City has to offer, I think I'm going to like it a lot better. Well, Mineral City's quite a place. I'm not talking about the town, girl. I'm talking about the cute kid behind the counter in the Eureka Cafe. You bet. You're a keen looker. Well, thank you. Here's your silver. I'll see how the steaks are coming along. Let that big dumb clock fry him. You stick around and talk to us, huh? Dale, I'll talk to you later about tonight. Uh, no, uh, don't go, Roy. You aren't bothering me, cowboy. Let me take your hand, girl. I'll tell your fortune for you. Well, no, I... Oh, go ahead, lady. Jack's pretty clever at it. Sure, I ain't gonna hurt you. Let go of my hand. Now, this pretty line here is a love line. Let go of her hand, Lester. Make me. All right, I will. Get him, Pete. Why, you fumble for your guns, eh? Oh, no, you don't. Take the rods out of my partner's hands, will you? And you won't either, because here's a little trick. You know, in Paradise Valley, we can flip a couple of guns right out of a man's hand while he's drawing. Hey, what happened? If there's any trouble, I want to be in on it. There isn't any trouble, Pat. The cowboy on the floor there tried to tell my fortune. Get up, Lester. Now I'm going to tell your fortune and yours too, Pete. Well, I think I know mine. I think I'm expected somewhere else. Hey, now, if you can't take a joke, why... We like our jokes a little funnier. Look, Rogers, I'm a good-natured cuss. But don't cross me if we ever meet again. Because the next time you won't catch me with a lucky punch. Come on, Pete. Let's get out of here. Back to Roy in two shakes. But first, let's greet his pals, Handy, Dandy, and Candy, the three honey bears on every package of Post Sugar Crisp. Hi, it's a treat to see you. Post Sugar Sugar Crisp is a treat, too. Absolutely. Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. It's different. Wholesome puffed wheat with a delicious candy coating of sugar and honey. But let the three bears tell you three wonderful ways to eat it. As a cereal, it's dandy. Sugar Crisp is just sweet enough. You don't need sugar. Check. For a marvelous breakfast, just add milk or cream. Oh boy, Sugar Crisp is great for snacks whenever you're hungry. Right. And eat it like candy, right out of the box. Right again. Sugar Crisp is good anyway. It tastes great and gives you plenty of quick food energy for work and fun. Mother, next time you market, remember what the three bears say. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Get genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. Buy Sugar Crisp tomorrow. Mysterious poison is striking down the cattle belonging to Dan Sutton, young Easterner who has bought the old gold mine spread. Roy and Pat offer to do night patrol duty on Sutton's ranch, for the poisoner strikes when Sutton is not present. Now the moon scudding through the clouds cast ghostly shadows over the resting herd. Do you think it was a very good idea, Roy, having Dan bring most of his stock into this one pasture? Well, sure. At least we don't have to worry about the poison slipping in while we're out on the other part of the spread. Well, we can see pretty good when the moon is out, but... I don't like being a quarter of a mile away from Nellie Bell and Trigger. I don't either, particularly, but you and I and Bully can lie here and run almost no risk of being discovered. Oh, me. Dale and Dan and his wife are over at the ranch house, talking and laughing, and maybe singing, and probably having something to eat. I'd sort of like to sneak over and get a cup of coffee or something. Five minutes to get there, five minutes to drink it, five minutes to get back, and... Oh, I wouldn't be gone no more than 15 minutes. You stay right here, Buster. If someone was spying and saw you there all of a sudden, they'd know something was up. Yeah, maybe you're right. Gee, it's spooky and shadowy out here, isn't it? Well, Bullet isn't afraid of spooks. He'll warn us if any of them come around. Right. Yeah! Uh, uh, oh, oh, it's, it's Dale. It sure is. Guess Bullet doesn't figure she's dangerous. Dale... You're supposed to stay in the ranch house. I know, Roy, but I just had to come out and see what's happening. Hasn't been a soul around. Now, you get back there with Dan and Mrs. Sutton. You're supposed to be a decoy, you know. 
Well, Roy, I didn't say anything to Dan and Helen about it, but a man peeked in the window about three quarters of an hour ago. What? I'm sure of it. I figured it was someone checking to see that Dan was inside. And as soon as I thought I'd given him enough time, I told Dan and Helen I was going to take some coffee out to you two. Well, that's just wonderful, Dale. I was just hankering for some. Well, the only thing is, I was so interested in what might be happening, I forgot the coffee. Oh, good going, Dale. Now, you better get back. Why? Put our milk's tied out in front, and if anyone's around, they'll think I'm still inside. Quiet, Bullet. Hey, what does he see? I don't know, but he's plenty excited. Shh, quiet. Look, way over there on the other side of the pasture. Isn't that two men? It looks like it. Hey, I can hardly hold bullet. Oh, that darn cloud. I can't see a thing now. Let's get up closer. Oh, wait, the moon will be out again in a second. Let's see what those men are up to before we frighten them off. Bullet, come back here. No, I relaxed my grip on bullet the wrong time. He was sure steamed up about whatever he saw. Pat, we'd better get Trigger and Nellie Bell and follow him. Do you want me to run back and get Dan? Yeah, why don't we all go? Have sort of a posse. Well, it's too late now. Bullets frightened them away. It'll be quicker to run down there and see what they were up to. Hey, what were those fellas doing down here? I was sure I saw one carrying something. And I was sure I saw one put something down. Well, we certainly haven't found anything with the flashlights. I wish Bullet would come back. He's a mighty well-trained dog, but if he was a horse, I'd say he took the bit in his teeth that time. Well, maybe we'd better go back to the house and tell Dan and Helen what happened. Well, you go ahead, Dale. But if those men were spreading poison, I'd hate to leave here until we found it. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? Well, that's just a salt block. Here's another one. Well, look around. There aren't any more, are there? No. I certainly don't see any. When Dan drove the cattle in here this evening, it was the first time this pasture had been used for months. And I don't think Dan would remember to bring in a couple of salt blocks. I wouldn't think so. He's a dandy feller, but between you and me, he don't know much about cattle. Well, we'd better have them analyzed. Maybe this is the way Dan's cattle are being poisoned. Maybe so, but we still have to find out who's doing it. Well, look who's here. A bullet, what do you mean breaking away like that? Hey, what are you carrying? Give it to me. What you got there, Roy? Oh, an old piece of cloth. Well, it looks like it. Shine your light here, Dale. Blue corduroy. Roy, Jack Lester was wearing a blue corduroy outfit when he was in the cafe this afternoon. Huh? Hey, he was at that. Well, if that's the case, why don't we just go over to Lair Moore's and haul Lester down to jail? There's plenty of people with blue corduroy jackets, Pat. We can't arrest Lester on evidence like that. Dale... You better take these salt blocks into the sheriff. Meanwhile, Pat, you and Dan and I will see if Bullet can pick up the trail of this piece of corduroy. This is pretty slow going, Dan, but it's safer than having Pat use his headlights so we could trail as fast as Bullet wants to go. Whatever you say, Roy. This is all pretty new to me. You sure Bullet knows where he's going? Seems like we've been edging along this fence for 15 minutes now. I'll trust Bullet. Don't make any more noise than you have to, Pat. Okay, okay. This fence separates your spread from Larimore's, doesn't it, Dan? Uh, yeah. Larimore's property cuts into mine in sort of a, a big U-shaped wedge along here. <laughs> hey, rain up. Bullet's stopping for something. Who took your Whoa, Andy, whoa. Hey, what's the matter? Your fence is down here, Dan. In fact, it's been cut. Well, it was all right this afternoon. I, I drove the cattle past here. There's an opening on the Laramore spread now, and Bullet wants to take us through it. Come on as quietly as you can. That's a fire up there, all right, Roy. Could be a line camp that some of Laramore's hands have set up. You and Dan stay here, and Bullet and I'll creep up a little closer and see who's there. Sure you don't want me to go along, Roy? No, I'll be right back. Come along, Bullet, and keep quiet. You stay there, Trigger. Sure nice of Roy to help me. No, oh, Roy likes to do things like this. Hey, Dan, whereabouts is that old gold mine your spread was named after? Uh, way over on the other side of this U-shaped piece of Laramore's property. <laughs> if there was anything left in the mine, I guess you wouldn't be so worried about meeting your mortgage payments, would you? <laughs> I guess I wouldn't. But I knew when I bought the place that the mine was worthless. Yeah, a lot of people looked at this property before you bought it, and 
They all had some of them uh, geohuliologists or, or whatever you call them out here looking at the place, and they all figured it was mined out. I never expected to own a gold mine, but I did think I'd be able to make a go of cattle ranching. Pat, Dan, Bullet and I got close enough to see three men around that fire. Who are they? Hey, is that Lester guy one of them? Yes, Lester's one and O'Connor's another. Well, why don't we just storm up there and wail a tar at them just on general principles? Because I think the third man is Mr. Larimore. Mr. Larimore? Are Lester and O'Connor holding him? I couldn't see, and I couldn't get close enough to hear what they were saying because Bullet was getting excited again. Mr. Larimore certainly wouldn't have anything to do with poisoning my cattle. Well, I certainly wouldn't think so. Hey, Pat, hold Bullet here. I'm going back to the fire. Lester and O'Connor strike me as strictly no good, but Larry Moore's a pretty good judge of character, and he hired them. <laughs> Bullet, quiet! Oh, there they go. They're on horseback and running again. They sure are, all three of them. All right, then. We're going after them. If Lester and O'Connor are putting something over on Larry Moore, we've got to catch them before it's too late. <laughs> They cut the fence here and went through. Come on. We're back on the gold mine ranch again. This part slopes up to the foothills. I hope it don't climb up too steep. Stay with it, Nellie Bell. Roy, I gotta turn on the headlights. I can't see where we're going. Okay, Pat. Those fellows know they're being chased. They've got fast horses. Well, ours are faster. Come on, Trigger. Roy, slow down. Nellie Bell's being bounced to pieces. We've got to catch them soon. Keep up, Pat. How can you find your way in this rough country, Roy? How do you know where we're going? I don't know exactly, but we'll go wherever bullet takes us. Oh, 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 Trigger, whoa, boy. Oh, Andy, oh, 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 Nellie Bell, oh. Uh, Roy, it's about time we stopped. We can't go any further. Hey, wait, what's that dark patch? Isn't that an opening in the rocks? That's the opening to the old mine shaft. Well, that's got to be where they went. Drive Nellie Bell up a little closer, Pat, till her headlights shine down that hole. Yeah, we'll try it, Roy. Come on, Nellie Bell. You can go a few more feet. That's it, Pat. You're going great. Yeah. Yeah, this kid must be part mountain goat. There. Uh, how's this, Roy? That's fine. The lights shine right down the shaft. Hey, there's a railroad track leading in there. Well, that's the old narrow-gauge railway they used to haul the ore out when they were working the mine. Now, this mountain edge up. We've got them trapped in there. Roy, are you sure it was Mr. Larimore with Lester and O'Connor? Well, I could have been wrong. The firelight was flickering, but it certainly looked like him. I don't get it at all. Why, they lead us on a chase like this and then hole up in an old hole in the ground where all we have to do is just sit and wait for them to come out. I, mean, I just don't get it. I don't either, but we'll find out soon. Come out of there, you men. Come out with your hands up. Why don't you come on in and get us? I thought that was you, Lester. O'Connor's is there with you, too, isn't he? Sure I'm in here. Huh. Unless I'm mistaken, the third man is Mr. Larrymore. Are you there, Mr. Larrymore? Roy Rogers. Is that you? Come in and get me, Roy. I need help. We're coming, Mr. Larimore. We'll save you. Damn, wait. Don't walk into that tunnel. They'd shoot us down like ducks. We'll return to Roy in a moment. But first, let's listen to the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Those three Sugar Crisp bears really know a good thing when they taste it. Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. That's why it's fast getting to be America's favorite cereal. You see, Sugar Crisp is already sweetened with honey and sugar. So you'll just eat it with milk or cream. And it's so handy for snacks any time you feel like sitting down to some good, nourishing eating. Or eat it just like candy. Get genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. It's a honey of a new cereal. Dan, is there a back entrance to this mine? Yeah, if it isn't caved in. It's on the other side of the hill. All right, ride there fast. Build a big fire and have your guns ready for whatever happens. Go with him, Bullet. 
Right, Roy. I'll do my best. Come on, Andy. Over these rocks. Roy! Roy, help me! Sure, Rogers. Help me if you dare. <laughs> hey, hey, we've just got to rush them, Roy. You're right, Pat, but not on foot. We'll be even better targets on horseback. And I haven't even got a horse. You've got Nellie Bell, and Nellie Bell's going to pretend she's a tank. What? Start her up. Drive her right down those railroad ties into the mine. Roy, we'll do it. <laughs> it's the last thing they'll expect. And if we can get them confused... That's the idea. Let's go. All right. Hang on, Roy. As soon as the headlights pick them up, I'll start shooting. Don't go too far past them. I'll handle her just right. Don't you worry. Hey, what's happening? There they are. They'll run us down. Stop. Stop. Shoot them, Lester. Fire those guns. Oh, so that's the setup. Well, I'll do the shoot. <laughs> Run for it. Uh, drop those guns, all of you. If we have to shoot again, we'll aim at you. All right, all right. Take their artillery, Pat. Larry Moore, I don't know why you did this, but I know whose side you're on. Hey, what are you trying to kick back into the shadows? Oh, yeah. Uh, or nothing. What are you talking about? Hey, it's a sack, Roy. Keep them covered while I get it. All right, Larry Moore. This was sure a smart place to run to. Yeah, you told us we... Shut up. If you weren't plain yellow. Hey, there's something yellow in this sack. It's gold nuggets, Roy. So you found a new vein in Sutton's gold mine, eh, Larry Moore? Well, the three of you had better march down the tunnel to where the firelight's starting to flicker at the other end. Follow some Nelly Bell, Pat. The tunnel narrows down, and we can keep them right in the headlights. <laughs> Well, we'll figure a way to get them into town, Roy, and I'll lock the three of them up. We'll get them into town, all right, Sheriff. I'm certainly glad you and Dale showed up out here. Well, we found that the salt blocks were coated with poison, and we hurried back to tell you. You can't hold me, Sheriff. As soon as I get my attorney, I, I'll explain everything. Well, you have a right to try, Laramore, but I think you'd need a whole law school and then some to get you out of this. You hired Lester and O'Connor to poison Dan's cattle so you'd break him, and then buy his ranch for practically nothing. Anyone who could think up as rotten a way to go about it isn't going to get any consideration from the court, no matter what people thought you were. Let's get started here. Come on, you. Oh, no, you don't. Roy, Lester's breaking away. I'll get him. Down, bullet. Hold bullet, Dale. I've got him. Easy, fellow. Let go, Rogers. Let go. All right, I will. Just long enough to land one more lucky punt. Help me get him on his feet, Sheriff, and we'll get started. All right, Roy. Hey, where's Pat? Well, he was here a minute ago. He helped Roy bring the men out of the tunnel. He left something pretty valuable in there, and he's going back to get it. More gold, Roy? <laughs> no, Nellie Bell. Only the tunnel narrowed down so much that they're going to have to back out the way we came in. Today, our country faces a double production job. Weapons for fighting a war and civilian goods for fighting inflation. It's a job that requires working together, all of us, management, labor, and the public. Production is everybody's job. Remember, the more efficiently we produce, the stronger we grow and the better we live. Remember, greater production means greater security for all of us. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Fellows and gals, Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, wants to tell you that there's a swell story about Roy and Dale in the February issue of Radio TV Magazine, now on the newsstands. All you Roy Rogers fans will want to read this heartwarming story. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisvelt with music by Milton Charles. Come and get it! Come and get it! For quick two-minute energy for work and play, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them? How about them? How about grape nuts flakes? Grape nuts.
Watts Flakes is one of the triple-wrapped post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Look for Grape Knots Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Joe Kearns, Howard Culver, Gil Fry, and Gil Stratton, Jr. The script was based on a story by Nate Kaplan. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup. 